to you a simple thought this morning. Probably every preacher that's ever preached has preached this message. And I know I have, and I know I don't think I've preached it here, but this is what the Lord, uh, we began to think about this earlier in the week and pray about it, and it is a, it is a I believe and it should be an encouragement to us this morning. Uh, while many of you here today profess to know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, amen, this message is for you. If there's someone here today that don't know Jesus, this message is for you because all that I'll preach to you today is at everyone's disposal if you'll just call on the Lord and ask Him to save you. Amen. I look around and it, it gets real depressing and real stressful if you watch the news and you see what's going on in the world today and you'll think, man, is it all worth it? Well, I'll tell you, stay, the, stay with the Lord. Amen. Stay with the study. Stay with what you know is right and live for the Lord and serve Him. And God's going to take care of all this mess one of these days. And so don't get discouraged when the news sounds discouraging. Just lift up your head. Redemption draws nigh. In 1 John chapter number 1 and then in Colossians chapter number 1 and verse 23. I'll read these uh, verses to you and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. The title of our message this morning are, is the three B's of the believer the three B's of the believer John chapter number 1 John chapter number 1 and verse number 1 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life notice that the word of life for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested, manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Pay attention to that. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now in the book of Colossians, chapter number 1, verse number 23, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which, ye, and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Notice in this verse, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to call upon thee this morning. God, I need your help. Father, we've read a good portion of the word of God. And Lord, what great truths we find in these verses. And Father, I pray that we'd make application today to our own hearts and lives. And Father, we might glean from this message, God, what will encourage us as we go in our daily walk with thee. Help us now. Father, again, we need your help. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. God, help us to say nothing contrary to thy will, but God, that all we say would be to thy glory. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The three B's of the believer. And I'm not going to take a lot of time with, I'm not going to take a lot of time with uh, introduction this morning because the scripture tells us and the scripture uh, says what it means. It means what it says. First of all, the first B of the believer is this. The first B of the believer is the book of God. Amen. This is the one of the greatest B's of a believer is the book of God. There's been great controversy, and I've read many, uh, even, even in these, you know, I get in conversations all the time with people that try to say, well, I understand this version better. I understand that version better. Listen, I want to tell you something. What's worked for all the great revivals 
in our land and in this world has been my King James Bible. And I will continue to stand on that. And as far as I'm concerned, all the others are weak. Amen. Very weak translations with very many mistakes and errors. But the Word of God that I have carried for all these years, the Word of God that I've heard preached all these years, has been the book of God, has been my Bible. And friend, that is one of the greatest things that a child of God has is the Word of God. And it says, uh, John says here that he is handled of the Word of life. And friend, when we take the blessed book in our hands and we handle the Word of, life, the word of God, this book, my friend, is our, eternal, uh, is our eternal way to heaven. This book is our guide as we live our lives for Him. I have people say, I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to turn. I'll give you advice that my daddy has given so many people that has made so much uh, impact on my life. He says, read the Bible. It's in the book. Amen. Read the Bible. You'll find it in the Word of God. And friend, I'm going to tell you something. The Word of God being rightly divided and being a spiritual book that, that must be spiritually discerned and you must have the Spirit of God to lead you. This book, my friend, is, is one of the greatest accomplishments that, or is the greatest thing that God has ever given to man and, and, and God has preserved it all since the beginning of time. God has preserved His Word. I sit in amazement when I read the pages of the Word of God. I read, stand in amazement when I read about the creation, how God put it all together and how God made it all work. And friend, you think about it, even creation in the book of God is such an amazing thing. You stand out and you look up at the stars in the sky and you think, oh my, how does all that work? God in heaven tells us in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. I don't have to have no scientist try to explain to me that somehow, somewhere, some, some billions of years ago, some faraway thing that somewhere a pop happened and an explosion happened and bang, there it is. Yeah, it's a bunch of foolishness. And for people to believe such as that, they have great faith. Now I'm telling you, they have great faith to believe that out of nothing could be formed something. They've got great faith in what they believe has happened. But I want to tell you something. God took nothing and He made something. Amen? God took nothing and out of nothing God created the heavens and the earth. The book of God tells me that. And we find all we need to know out of the blessed book, out of the Word of God, we find out all we need to know about everything we need to know about. You find about relationships in the Word of God. You find about marriage in the Word of God. You find about how man was uh, created in the Word of God. Every answer to every question that you've got, you'll find it in the Word of God. My friend, today I don't, people make life so hard when if they just trust the Word of God. Believe the book, my friend, and God in heaven will bless you immensely. Now, if you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, you've never been born again by the, by the grace of God, and you want to know how to get to heaven, Right here it is, my friend. Right here it is in the Word of God, how to get to heaven. It's got the answers to all the world's problems, how to get to God. The Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's in the book. How do I, how do I keep out of hell? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Salvation is in none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. The Word of God is sharp and powerful. It is sharp. It is a, a, a sword that cuts both ways. It's quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. The Word of God is perfect, converting the soul. The, the book of Psalms chapter number 19 and verse number 7 says it's perfect. Now let me tell you something, if this is perfect, and that's where it comes out of my Bible, if this is perfect, then why try to change perfection? Amen. Why try to make anything more perfect than it already is? It's perfect. It's the Word of God. It's forever settled in heaven, and it's sealed, amen, in heaven as being the perfect Word of God for you and I today. The Word of God was made flesh and dwelled among us. The Bible says the Word being Jesus was made flesh and dwelled among us. John chapter 1 and verse number 14. The Word of God, my friend, walked among man. You say, how could that be possible that a Word would walk 
In the Bible, when it says, talking about the Word, it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God Himself is revealed in this book. All about God that man needs to know is right here. All about eternity that man needs to know is right here. All about the world affairs that man needs to know is right here. You say, well, what about all this mess that's going on in the world today? It's right here. It's all, it's all uh, uh, prophesied to be this way before the Lord comes. And friend, it makes me excited to know that right before our very eyes, prophecy is being fulfilled and we're right on the verge of the coming of the Lord. Amen. So the Word of God has the answers to man's problems. The Word was made flesh and dwelled among us. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 5 said the Word of God is pure. Amen. We, we look around in these mountains and we find pure water. I like it. Uh, somebody said it ain't no good unless it's come over three or four lizards' backs. Amen. He thought it was going to say rock. But I've turned on the spigot before down at my neighbor's house that I grew up and, and turned on the spigot because they, well, we got our water out of a well. They got their water out of a spring. I think theirs was a little better because I've turned on the spigot before and out come a lizard. Amen. And thinking about it now, it's a wonder I didn't throw that in a pan and fry it and eat it. Amen. But it was pure. That water is pure. Listen, I want to tell you what water is pure. It's the water of the Word of God. Amen. It, this is a pure book. The Word of the Lord is pure. It's, it's, it is, it is uh, pure to, for cleansing. It is pure for, for taking and knowing that you got the truth. Amen. In the Word of God. No other book is, is, is as pure as as the Word of God. The Word of God is pure. Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 17 says that the Word of God is our sword. Friend, we fight not against flesh and blood, but we're fighting a battle in which we need some armor and we need something to fight with and, and we can't go out and fight this battle with our fists. we got to fight it with the sword of the Word of God. So I'm telling you, friend, one of the bees of the believer is the blessed book of God. Amen. It'll stand throughout all eternity. God's preserved it down through those centuries of time. And when we go to be with the Lord, friend, God's word will still be settled in heaven and it still will be preserved. We're born again by the word of God. 1 Peter 1 and verse number 23. We're born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. I'm saved by God's word. I'm glad one day some preacher preached to me. You're glad someday some preacher preached to you. It might not have been from a pulpit. It might not have been, it might have been over the radio. It might have been over a gospel track. It might have been what somebody said to you in witness. But the preacher preached to you. The Spirit of God, the great preacher, preached conviction upon you one day. And you got saved by the wonderful Word of God. And I believe it takes that for a man to be born again. I believe he must be under conviction. I believe he must hear the Word of God. And I believe under conviction and hearing the Word of God, friend, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That man can be saved, woman, boy, or girl can be saved. By hearing the Word of God. The Word of the Lord is right. Psalm chapter number 33 and verse number 4. It's right. People get angry with me. When I try to explain to them something they want to know by the Word of God, well, that can't be right. Yes, friend, the Word of God is right. Will a, will a merciful God send people to hell? That can't be right, preacher. God don't send. Listen, for a thousand and one hundred and eighty-seventh time, God don't send people to hell. People choose to go that direction. God made a way possible for all to go to heaven. But by their own choice, they choose to go to hell. You say, preacher, there's no one that would choose to go to hell. They might not say, I choose heaven or I choose hell. But by their rejection of the Son of God, that is their choice. That they deny God and go to hell lost without God. But aren't you glad for the day when it comes to choice in your life that you could accept Jesus or you could go the way of the world? You said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. You made your choice, and because of that, you're on your way to heaven by the Word of God. So the first B of the believer is the blessed book. The second B of the believer is the blood of Christ. Verse number 7 of John chapter 1. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses 
from all sin. Amen. I'm glad that it does. We preached last week on that bloody religion. But I'll tell you something. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses from all sin. I've known some wicked people in my life. I've met some real mean people. I've met some, some you would call them almost devils because of their wickedness. I've stood and talked to them in prison that had committed all kinds of murder and all kinds of, of, of the most horrendous acts that you can think about. And But you know what? The Bible says that he cleanses from all sin. That means there's never been anybody too wicked. That means there's never been anybody, anybody too sinful that God in heaven couldn't cleanse them of their sins. Why? Because it's not in the power of man, but it is in the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. His blood cleanses from all sin. And I've had people tell me, preacher, I've just been too mean. I've just been too mean. There's no way God can love me. There's no way God can save me. I've been too mean. Listen, we were all sinners in need of a Savior. When God looks at sin, He looks at sin. He doesn't look at big sins and little sin. God, when God sees a sinner, He sees a man that is sinful. And it doesn't matter whether you grow up in being a good moral person and you grew up doing right and you grew up growing... Uh, uh, Grew up doing uh, good things and not doing evil things. I'll tell you, if you rejected Jesus as your Savior, you're lost. And you still have that sin of unbelief in your heart. And without that, with that sin of unbelief, if you die, no matter how good moral person you've been, you ain't going to go to heaven. You're going to go to hell. But I've had people that have, like I said earlier, I've, I've, met, I've run into murder, admitted to me how they had killed people and told me how they had had took people's lives. And you think, well, there's no hope for them. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses from all sin. You think about the most horrendous sin of the flesh that you can think about. Could Jesus love that person? Could Jesus still forgive that person? Through His blood, He loves you. Through His blood, He cleanses you. The blood... Friend, I'm telling you, the, the, the great bee of, of, of this life is the bee of the blood of Jesus Christ. The book tells us about the blood of Jesus Christ. The book tells us about our, 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 our eternity with Him. And the blood of Jesus supplies the way for us to get to heaven when we leave this world. Friend, it's all about the blood of Jesus. It's all about what He did for us on the cross of Calvary. So we see that we, we have the book to tell us about the blood. The blood cleanses from all sin. It saves those to the, to the uttermost that will believe in Him. Hebrews 7 verse 25. And the only way to defeat the devil in this world is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 11. How do you think you're get, going to get through this life? When, and uh, fighting the devil which you can't fight on your own it must be through the blood of the Lord Jesus you must have his help amen when the devil comes your way and he starts hounding on you and he perches on you purchases up on your shoulder and begins to tell you how how wicked you are and how mean you are and how that God can't love you and you know you've been saved by the grace of God. I tell you what you do, you look over your left shoulder and you tell the devil face to face, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin and it's by his blood, old devil, that I'm saved. It's not by my good deeds because I know I'm not good, I'm not good enough, but it's by the blood of Jesus Christ that I've been cleansed and old devil, you just go your way you just take your path back to your house and you leave me alone because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin now, sometimes we're tempted to do evil this week you've been tempted to do some evil in your mind in your actions you've been tempted of the, the devil to do evil but I'll tell you something to overcome that temptation just say Lord I plead the blood Lord, I plead the blood. God, help me not to do that evil. And when you've done evil, what do you do? You confess Him. Amen. You confess your sins because He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. How does He cleanse you? By His blood. Amen. You get today, when you, get, uh, when you sin, 
and you need forgiveness, you plead the blood. Say, Lord, forgive me. And you know what forgives you? The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses from all sin. It has power to defeat, to defeat Satan. And guess what? You've been made nigh to Him in Hebrew, Ephesians chapter 2, 13. You've been made nigh to Him by His blood. Once we were aliens away from God. You know what's the matter with most people today? They're alienated from God. They're not, they don't know Him. They're, not, they're foreigners away from God because they've never been born again. We've been alien, but hey, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we who once were aliens are made nigh to Him by His precious blood. When I got saved, hallelujah, I got into the family of God. Amen. I had, oh my goodness, when I, listen, I was born a mom and dad and I had a brother and we got four in the family. Now we got a bunch of grandkids so our family's gotten bigger. But when I was born, I had a brother and a mama and a daddy. But when I got, oh, thank God, when I got birthed into the family of God, Brother Max, I claimed you as my brother. Didn't even know him, but he was my brother. Amen. Amen. And, and I want to tell you something. I claim, I claim you as my sister. Amen. You become my sister when I, I didn't even know you. But I, oh, thank God for the big family I've got. Amen. And Sister Sylvia became my sister. Sister Thelma become my sister. Hallelujah. Brother Joe become my brother. Oh, thank God. When I got saved, I got a big family. And all of us been made nigh to him by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, friend, I, I've got family all over this world that I've never met. I've got brothers and sisters all over this world that I've never met. When I get around one of them and their spirit bears witness with my spirit, thank God I realize I'm among family and I've been made nigh by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, not, not only near to Him, but also near to my family. Thank God I'm glad I've got a big family. Now, listen. If you've got anything against any of your family members spiritually, you better get that thing worked out. You better get it work, you better get it right between you and them and between you and God and between you and you and your brother or sister in Christ. Because you'll never have good peace, joy, happiness, and you'll never enjoy the family like you want to enjoy the family if you're not close to the family. And you better get it right with God. I know church people have known in the past that wouldn't speak to each other. Always talking about one another. Saying hurtful things about one another. All because one of them did something that the other one didn't like. And instead of making, making up with one with another's brothers and sisters in Christ, they let, a, they let a, a hardness form among them and hadn't spoken in, a, in 30 years. Friend, that ain't right. God's people have to get along with God's people. I might not always agree with you on everything you say or do, but I want to tell you some church, I love you with all my heart. You might not always agree with everything I preach, but amen, one thing you got to do, you got to love me, amen. If you're right with God and I'm right with God, we got to love one another no matter, amen. If I hurt your feelings and I know about it, I'm going to be the first one there to apologize for hurting your feelings. And if you hurt my feelings, hey amen, I'm not ever going to come and tell you you hurt my feelings. But if God deals with you and you come and tell you you've hurt my feelings, hey amen, I'll get you around the neck and I'll hug you and I'll love you up to me and I'll say, brother, I love you. Hey amen, I love you, brother. I'm glad God put us in the same big family. Hey amen. Oh, there ain't nothing going on between me and James. I just used him as illustrations before anybody gets any wrong ideas. If it had been a woman, you all would have really said something, wouldn't you? Now the rumor's going to go around. He made up with James right in the middle of the church service. Hey, hallelujah. If that'll get somebody else closer to the Lord, you go right ahead and tell it. Amen. Me and James own up to it. Amen. And we'll be seen all over town together. Amen. People say, well, the preacher and him made up. Amen. If it promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'd say just have at it. Amen. Oh, thank God I'm glad for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin and that draws me near to Him, draws me near to the cross and draws me near to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, friend, you've got, you got to stop back, step back and think here just a moment. When I come to this church, they want but one person. I don't think I may be one person in here that knew me besides Sister Carol, and she didn't know who I was. She just knew what a big mouth I had. Amen. She knew what a big mouth I had because she'd look down my throat a lot of times looking at my teeth. Amen. 
But I reckon that, I reckon nobody. But you know what? I, I fell in love about the first time I was here. And my feelings weren't mutual for a little bit. Amen. Y'all kind of looked at me kind of sideways the first service or two. But then you got we began to catch on one to another and see that we's all on the same page together. See, we's all born again by the same blood together. Hallelujah. And we've been made nigh to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you what God can do, friend. God can do. Amen. And if we'll let him do it in our lives, friend, there's no telling what God can do with us. We've been made nigh by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have the book, we have the blood, and then last of all, my friend, we have the blessed hope. Hallelujah. Now I look around at the world, and my hope is not in this world. And my hope is not in this government. Can anybody tell the truth anymore? I think the whole crowd, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Let me get it out, say it out, and then I'll have it off my, out of my crawl. I think that whole crowd up in Washington could probably not get through a door without having somebody else to open it for them because they all lined their noses are out that far Pinocchio's. I'm telling you, friend, I've never seen such, such bantering in all my life and such, uh, you know, uh, trying to cover up one lie after the other. Hey, my hope ain't in that. My hope ain't in the world, the world the way it's going, and terrorism happening everywhere, people getting killed, people getting murdered. Uh, you know, all, all, all the time there's plots trying to destroy somebody. I, my hope ain't in that. If your hope's in that, friend, you're in bad shape. If your hope's in the government, you're in bad shape. I'm sorry you're in bad shape. They ain't going to do nothing for you. I found out i got to change my insurance. Now, I was told I could keep my insurance if I liked it. Well, I like my insurance, and guess what? I ain't going to be able to keep it. And if I do keep it, it's going to be so high I can't afford it, so I'm going to have to change my insurance. One lie after the other. My hope ain't in this government, my friend. My hope ain't in this world, my friend. My hope is not in the, in the pleasures of this world. Now, I love to hunt. You all know I love to hunt. I plan on it a couple more times before the season ends in December. I, I like that. But my hope ain't in my worldly pleasure that I enjoy so much. My hope is not in the things of this world that can make me happy. And listen, I like to sit on the side of a tree. I don't like falling out. And I did the last time. I didn't like that. That didn't make me happy at all. It hurt when I hit the ground. If I hadn't had all them clothes, I'd have probably broke something. But I didn't, and I got up and went on my way. And listen, that wasn't happy, but I enjoy sitting out on the side of a tree and it's 30 degrees. What some of you, you crazy preachers, it's absolutely out of your mind. But see, I put enough clothes on to where I don't, I don't freeze to death, and I sit out there and I meditate. Yeah, I sit out there and I think. And I think, and God thinks, and we think together, and God tells me, and I listen, and oh, it's a pleasure. But you know what? My hope ain't in that. If it all went away tomorrow, I, you know, I'd say, oh, Lord, God, you, you give that to me for a while, and God, it ain't there no more. But my hope is not in worldly pleasure. You see people that live and die for sports. You see people that live and die for a lot of different things, but my hope is not in this world. It's not in this government. It's not in this worldly pleasure. My hope is not in worldly possessions. I know people that the more they get, the more they want. I wonder what did all these people do with all these billions and billions of dollars they got? You know what they do? They worry about, one, how they're going to get more, and two, how they're going to keep what they got. And they go through life worrying about their money and never enjoying the simple things of life. See, they get out because they got so much money, they ain't never got no privacy because somebody's got to be with them all the time, make sure they don't get knocked off. And they have bodyguards, and they got to have security people all the time around them, have, never have no privacy. Man, my, my, listen, my hope just ain't in that. My hope is not in worldly possessions. I've got a, I've got a small house. Me and my wife got two cars. I've got, got children. I've got grandchildren. I'm happy as I can be with what i got. Amen. Now, if the Lord would send something else my way, I'm going to take it and I'm going to be happy about it. Amen. But if you don't, thank God, I'm going to be just as happy as I can be. You say, preacher, is there things you want in life? Well, sure I am. Anybody in here don't want something in life? Anybody particularly happy if, 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 if a new, hey, brother, if a, if a brand new pickup truck come your way, would you say, I'm happy, I don't want that? No, of course not. See, I tested him right there, see if he's going to tell the truth, because I knew the answer. <laughs> no, 
oh, if somebody wants to give me a new car, amen. But listen, my hope ain't in that. My hope is not in the, in the worldly pleasures, in the worldly possessions. My hope just ain't in that because I know, friend, the more people have, the more they want. Never can, men can never have enough toys. Amen. And when you get enough, who said that? If, you, if a man thinks he's got enough toys, somebody else will come along having a little better toy, and man wants that. Same way with you ladies. You can never have enough makeup, shoes, clothes, amen, jewelry. What else? See, I don't know much about it.